After what seems like an eternity, your rapid descent comes to an abrupt end. You remain still for a moment while your heart settles and your eyes adjust, breathing in stale, forgotten air. Before you, a narrow and eroded walkway becomes faintly visible in the dim light, cutting a winding path through a cavern so expansive it seems a world unto itself. In the distance, you can make out the cold gleam of living Audra veins that spike and fork in and out of view from the murky depths beneath. Their glow a faint and fleeting guide along the ancient trail. You look above at the opening you jump through, now barely a speck of light like some distant star alone in the cosmos and forever out of reach. Your only way lies ahead. Well, that went better than I expected. Think I dislocated my... Yeah. That's better. Everyone all right? No shattered knees? Good. Just me, then. That was bracing.
That's not very helpful. The ashes Ah, That's not very helpful.
chance to get a good shot with this. We brought a sled.
My old pupil, you are a welcome sight, but a worrying one as well. Do you still wander lost in the darkness after all these many years? You are so different now from who you were then, yet much remains the same. Old troubles with a new face. What is it that has brought you here? I'd hoped after our last discussion you would find what you sought. Has it eluded you all this time? I can only guess your presence here has something to do with Theos. The energy of this place changes when he is near. I don't know what he has done, but I do know of the souls that pass through here now. They do not come by choice. After all this time, he would still stand against the tide. I will tell you what I remember. I can see his influence, still hanging like a weight about your neck. So it always was. He had inspired something in you. We spoke of him the last time you were here also. It was just after the trial. You were... agitated. I think because you started to consider that what I was teaching may have been true. That the gods aren't real. <laughs> I dreaded the idea from the moment the Delamgon suggested it. And yet, it almost feels like a relief. She's not serious. But that's not... Is that the truth we've come for? That even the gods are false? That doesn't seem possible.
What I taught was that the gods whose faith we had been spreading were not gods at all, but something else entirely. Something created by people. They were conceived by Engwith, a society of high minds and broad concerns. Theos' people. In their time, every people worshipped its own gods. Sometimes they warred over it. After a few wars of their own, the Engwithans sought an end to it. They devoted all their energy to finding the true creators. Generation after generation, they prodded and worked the stitching of the world and unlocked its secrets. One day, they found an answer. Except the answer was no answer at all. There were no gods to be found. Or if there ever were, they were gone. It shook them, this finding. If they could discover this on their own, how long until others would? How long before war and chaos reigned over a world without consequence? But they had mastered many things in their pursuit of these answers. And with their mastery, they crafted their own gods to fill the... I never thought of it as faith, but I think you are right to call it that. Let the world see... Let them decide what to do. That was my faith. I became a missionary because the gods brought me hope that I wanted to bring to others. For a time, the truth sent me to a dark place. Then the day came when I realized nothing had changed. That I still had a purpose, and the purpose was the same and it was worth living for. I began questioning the other missionaries in public, exposing their parlor tricks. In time, their following became mine. The Anguithan missionaries all knew it, but they never told the rest of us. They meant it to be a secret that died with them. And in the end, they allowed their bloodlines to fade from memory. I had been assigned to join a few of them at a temple. I found the door to their chambers closed, but the room was stone and the door thin. Their voices carried. I heard... Enough. I investigated the things they spoke of, and everything was there, just as they said it'd be.
You asked me this once before. Nothing I can say would be any proof, and it may be certainty your soul craves. Resolution. But if you are bound for the same place Theos directs these souls, you will see for yourself as you once did. Everyone faces this truth at one time or another. Few confront it. Few have the stomach to ask what if. And in avoiding the question, they deny themselves an identity of their own. What if all the tragedy, all the persecution, came in defense of an imposter? That's not... That, that can't be right. Aethys, he... He's done miracles for people. The power of the gods is undeniable. The truth of the story they weave is not. What if you had always been alone, without guidance?
As poorly as I've chosen my guides, I suppose it would be a comfort to know that I'm free of them. The freedom has always been. It was the guidance that was the illusion. If all our common threads are spun from a lie, what's left to bind us together? I... I don't know. I never found the answers I sought. But after all we have seen, I think the gods are not enough. Perhaps the threads are unraveling. The lie is too old. I think maybe we are all meant to be divided. Every effort, every search for a single truth will end in failure. Because there is no single truth. We seek simple answers where there are none. Threads spun from falsehoods tend to unravel on their own, my friend. For it is in our natures to seek truth. What if our burdens come to us not because they are meant to be, but because they happen to be? We fulfill them anyway, because they still matter to the people around us, even if we know better. What if even mastery over all things cannot answer the most basic of questions? I stopped asking those questions long ago. It is enough to care for those we love with the time we have in this life. Verus, we find purpose in ourselves and in the people in our lives. There is bliss to be found in the things we create, but sorrow as well. Every creation bears the imperfections of its creator, and its creator's creator. Art and song are creations, but so are weapons and lies. We must be careful that our creations do not consume us. I ask these things not to trouble you, but to show why they must be confronted. No answer is simple. But somewhere between them all lies a truth so beautiful, not even a god could conceive it. Do we not owe ourselves a chance to find our part in it? If that is truly what you believe, then you are a far different person than the one I knew. I've been alone here with my thoughts for so long now. I've found peace with my failures, and with my punishment. I no longer curse fate for what might have been. But there is one thing that has clawed and scraped at my mind all these years. One thing that will not be put to rest until I know. Until I understand. I need to know why you chose to remain with the Inquisition, even after you'd learned the truth. Do you... Do you remember? Woodica gifted him a great many things, but his ability to manipulate was always his own.
things I taught, the things I believed, I needed to hear that. I needed to know it wasn't because... You were a blank slate to me once. A blank slate that I had taught the wrong things. I'd given you a false faith. I had to know I could undo what I had done. Redirect you to embrace the truth. You had heard both sides, seen everything. If not you, then who? I expected dissent, but I needed to know that true faith would prevail. Perhaps I'd been wrong to place so much importance on one person's actions. It was all I could do to feel like there was an answer. Even knowing what you've told me, some part of me knows it doesn't truly answer what I wished to know, nor will an eternity of silent contemplation. I will have only my guesses and suspicions, and that will have to do. And what of your understanding of our past? Are you at ease with the choice you made? There is nothing to forgive. The fault was always mine. I led you down the path that led to Theos. When I tried to steer you back, it was too late. To have taught someone wrong is far worse than to have done wrong yourself. Long have I wished to make amends for this, but the time has long since passed. At first I thought this might be the source of your soul's anguish, but now I see I was mistaken. You are not divided on this matter. You have put it behind you. It is with Theos that your agony lies, in sun and shadow. Your questions are not for me, but for him. 
and it may be that only an answer from the mouth of Theos himself will satisfy your needs. Yet if there is anything I can tell you that would be of use, ask and you shall know. In a matter of this prison was full once in the days of the Inquisition. But time weathers all things, even will. They aid you because they would bend you to their own, but these souls. These forgiven the gods have bequeathed last time someone had. The gods need to be reminded that we have a spirit, and that spirit is proof against their power. They have the power to manipulate and confuse and ruin us, but not to change our will. Theos will not wait for you. If you do not catch up to him now, you may never find him again. If I repent, all I have done has meant nothing. For my part in leading, if ever... Not very helpful. I'll teach you. I'll teach you a lesson. Stop. 
stands. That's not very helpful. See what I can do. Brave 
teach you a lesson? Show them how it's done! The gods are a sham that people have followed for thousands of years. Anyone here in Echo? Full of surprises, aren't you? Look at the size of this place. Look at that. A city to put all others to shame. And long lost. Can you do that again? I, I had something in my eye. M missed most of it. That's not very helpful.
Hey, hey! You gotta stop it with that. I just about punched you to snap you out of it. Now's not the time to be shy about it. This thing, you're twitchy these days. Reminds me of Mayorwald more than I'd like. Anything I can do, you just... Ready to take the oath to spread the word of the gods to the lost and heathen. I am trusting you to remain loyal to the gods of this. If you do not, you will have greater. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. This is a missionary, same as I was, taught the wrong things as I was. You are ready to give a confession? I am ready to hear one 
from you. You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? A sanctum holy to Woodica. There are others like it in service to the other gods. I come here often to pray for her counsel, and in this space I may be assured that she hears me. sought only to destroy the foundations of peace and civility that my people sacrificed everything to build. It has many uses, but its purpose is to bring structure to the chaos that surrounds it. Monuments to Woodica's greatest servants among my people. I hope to join them myself one day, but my work is not yet complete. The Inquisition was based on the need to cut the flesh from a rotting wound. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? Something men can turn to in their darkest moments when their days seem only like bridges from one tragedy to the next? Our gods are all these things. We're in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. You've been through much these past few months. You will return home and you will rest. When you feel you have recovered, you may rejoin us at the trials. The Inquisition is far from over, and I will have need of you. 
There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. The Inquisition will not end until we have pronounced judgment on all of them. How did you find it? Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. Then she should have obeyed. I ask one thing of all my followers. She was incapable. A waste of rare talent and intellect. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? Or is it, as my agents suggest, that they have no direction of their own? You. You worshipped Aethus, did you not? Your spies are good. What gave me away? The cake? Yet when your god needed you the most, you chose your country. We were being invaded. Not by anyone who was acting like a god. Then I should think your hometown gave you a hero's welcome when you returned. They gave me one. It didn't last, but what does? Neither faith nor loyalty in your case, I think. Your god deserved better from his follower. You have devoted yourself to studying the work of my people. Why? Because I believe we can learn from the past and use that knowledge to better ourselves. I wanted Rawatai to surpass the Anguithins, build upon what they knew. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? You are living in the time of my people, Amawa. You owe them more than you will ever comprehend, and so it shall ever be. Greater civilizations than yours have attempted to reclaim what we buried. The greater their successes, the worse their fates in the end. I have seen to it. I understand your Duke's Bells gave you a mission. Their orders do not absolve me of my greater responsibility to the safety and well-being of the Republics. Yet you disobeyed. Something you already have a reputation for. They will know, of course. If it had been for a worthy cause, they might have forgiven you. But I don't see them pursuing animancy after seeing what it's done here. They trusted you. And you disappointed. As you always have. And you will again be disowned. The parents scold, but the children are safe. Whether Anamancy research continues in the Republics or not, they will survive. For now, that's enough. In any case, I wouldn't be so smug about my fate, Deus. I imagine Woodaka responds to disappointment much more severely than even my dukes. State your name and purpose, young Acolyte. My name belongs to the gods, in my hand to their service. And I'm going to purge it of your stain. You serve none but yourself. 
Without contact with your order, you can have no higher purpose. Only the base concerns of the flesh. You have cast yourself from our ranks. No. I've risen above them. I'll take the leaden key and lead in a way that you, who remained nothing more than a slave to the gods, never could. A leader without insight, directing an organization that does not question. Quite a vision, Initiate. You are far from home, Dwarf. I knew my hunt would send me a long way from Masuk. It was a challenge I was glad to undertake for my village. A journey, then. It must be of some import to take you so far and to last so long. It's important to Masuk. And so it's important to me. You are here because you are lost. The gods cannot reach everyone, I'm afraid. May you fare better in your next lives. I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you? But our business was concluded long ago. You think your abilities only flow in one direction. That isn't how it works, I'm afraid. Not for me. For all that you saw of my soul in the sanitarium, I saw as much of yours. I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. The heart of this country has skipped a beat. Nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule, and replaced him with a cruel despot who brought them to ruin. When plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. That's where you are mistaken. There was a time back when your soul was still a shapeless mist, when the world believed only in false gods. Thousands of them. Gods that told them to take slaves. Gods that told them to make war upon their neighbors and devour the slain. Gods that told them to burn their children alive and cover themselves in the ashes as a sign of their faith. But all that changed when they learned of the true gods. Our gods. All those misshapen, bestial instincts melted beneath the radiance of our gods' majesty. You could see it in their eyes. That dull emptiness replaced with the glimmer of a kindled spark. and replaced it with one far worse. Had you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created? We are not all so virtuous as she. Without our gods, the most wicked, the most tyrannical, they would take that power for themselves.
But more than that, it would be a hollow existence. All mysteries forever unanswered. All purposes constructed from meaninglessness. No endings to bring closure. Only a wheel turning without mercy, grinding our spirits to dust. For all my years, I have seen exactly what they are capable of. What the apostate asked was beyond any man. All I have seen, the millennia of experience. I will not be dissuaded from this course. This is the only way. You have not thought this through. There is no leaving this place for you. I allowed it once, but you have made it all too clear what a mistake my mercy was. With your soul and thousands of others, I will see this world purged of its suffering. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for aid. Ah! Uh. I have Let's go. That's not very helpful. Oh, <laughs> 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 
forgive me, Mordica. All those lifetimes spent to preserve a single vital secret. I can't imagine having that much certainty. After journeying for lifetimes, I can't imagine his failure, knowing it was all for nothing. In his own way, Theos must have truly believed he was caring for the people of Aeora, protecting them from themselves. A shame his soul won't have a chance to reflect on his errors before it enters the wheel. He was good at serving his god, I give him that. But he should have picked a better one. All those lives. And at the end of them, he was no better than the very people he sought to guide. A pity he would ever have to face that realization again. Some acts cannot be forgiven, it seems.
At your command, the ancient device became your instrument, spinning to life with deafening resonance and gathering up the swirling essence like thread on a great spindle. There, in the pale, pulsing glow of the machine that set you on this path long ago, you summoned all your strength, focusing on your objective and blocking out all else. With a single concussive blast that rocked the chamber and sent you tumbling to the ground, you freed the souls from their stasis. Exhausted, your consciousness slipping away, your last sight was of the machine, dark and dormant. Then your eyes closed, and sleep welcomed you at long last. After coming to and searching for some time, you discovered the route Theos used to enter Sun in Shadow, and embarked on a long and arduous ascent back to the surface. You emerged in Ter Evron after days of tunneling through the rubble Theos had left behind, and when you stepped into the daylight, you were faced with a different Deerwood than the one you had left. At your direction, the souls diverted by Theos were guided back to the vessels originally meant for them. For the first time, parents of hollow-born children woke to the cries of their infants and looked into their eyes to see them staring back. People fell to their knees where they stood, thanking Helia or Magrin or even Aethus for their forgiveness of whatever guilt they felt they bore. But for all the relief that had come to some parents, others only found new grief. For many thousands of Holoborn had died during Wideman's legacy, many by their parents' own hands. For those children, there would be no homecoming. Yet the last hollow birth was in the past now, and those parents willing to risk trying for a new child were frequently rewarded, often with twins. Many felt they saw Helia's hand in it, and the year would be remembered as the year of Helia's splendor. With the birth of his hollow-born child, the last threads of Lord Radric's sanity frayed and broke apart, his wife the first victim of his wrath. With a fortress to protect him and a garrison of loyal soldiers at his command, he continued to snuff out all signs of resistance from the citizens of Gilded Vale, real or perceived. In the end, all would hang from the boughs of the village's trees, watching over their dead town with vacant eyes. Following the assassinations of Duke Avar Wolfgren and Lady Webb, Defiance Bay was thrown into political upheaval. In the ensuing weeks, the streets had become the domain of looters and blackguards. Few dared to step outside their own doors alone or unarmed. But order was soon re-established by the Knights of the Crucible, who, despite their depleted numbers, had gained favor in the public eye for their role in the unraveling of the conspiracy surrounding Wideman's legacy, and were quickly reinforced by returning forces from Fleetbreaker Castle. For the Knights, their resurgence marked a return to the tradition as well. Having seen firsthand the dangers presented by dabblers and animancy, the Order quickly abolished the practice internally, preferring the familiarity of their hammers and forges to the uncertainties of Essence and Adra. Their identity rediscovered, the Knights suppressed their political aspirations and began once again to train their recruits in the art of blacksmithing, recapturing the post-revolutionary ideals of Deerwood and regaining the respect of its citizens as a result. The destruction of the machine atop Ter Noaneth spelled the end of the reanimated corpses in Heritage Hill. Though at first few were willing to venture into the abandoned district, it was soon cleaned out and rebuilt. The district's horror is still fresh in people's minds. It would be some time before it was fully repopulated. But eventually the lure of cheap prime land would all but erase the memory. The Duke's assassination at the apparent hands of an Animancer had caused catastrophic rioting in the streets of Defiance Bay, and few Animancers survived the first day. Many Deerwoodens took the end of Wideone's legacy as a sign, both that the gods did not approve of Animancy, and that the purging of Animancers in Defiance Bay had been enough to satisfy them. In time, their rage would subside, and a number of surviving Animancers remained in and around Defiance Bay, often taking to the wilds to practice their science without repercussions. The rejuvenation of Cad Nua was a short-lived endeavor. While the rise of a new master had presented new hopes of the keep being restored to its former glory, time proved otherwise. 
plans for maintenance of the structure were postponed time and time again, until ultimately they were scrapped altogether, their master's priorities lying elsewhere. Palagina had gone against the Duke's Bell's orders by inventing a new trade arrangement with the Anamenfath to accommodate the recovering Deerwooden market. With the Deerwood's people still weakened by Wideman's legacy, the Valian Republics easily pushed their would-be competitors out of the market. For her outrageous insubordination and audacity, Palagina was banished from the Republics. She traveled north in the Eastern Reach, avoiding Valian ports and entering the ranks of the kind wayfarers. Despite her bravery and dedication to those in her care, her strange appearance made her feel like an outsider wherever she went. Adair chose not to return home, Still conflicted as to his role in the Saints' War, and unsure of his place in the Deerwood, he took a ship to Adir and reunited with his parents. There, he resumed the quiet lifestyle he had grown accustomed to in his years as a farmhand in Gilded Vale. When the dust settled in sun and shadow, Aloth looked upon the remains of Theos Ixarchanon, his former master. He saw where the Grand Master had gone wrong, and what would be required to undo the harm Theos had wrought. With a flick of his wrist, he burned Theos' robe, headdress, and every other symbol of the man's power. Never again, he vowed, should Kith live in fear and blind obedience to an authority they did not understand. Armed with the knowledge and courage he had gained on his journeys with the Watcher, he set out on the long and lonely task of dismantling the Leaden Key. After all that he had learned in the Watcher's company, Kanarua could no longer see meaning in his pursuit of the Tanvi Oratoa. He decided to leave what remained of it within the depths of the Endless Paths and return home. Kana bid the Watcher farewell and sailed back to Rawatai, spending the tempestuous journey reflecting on the time he had lost to the pursuit of falsehoods. His family found Kana much changed, his fiery excitement replaced with a weary solemnity. Determined to change his wandering ways, Kana took up a quiet life as a lore keeper at the college, teaching young students the traditions of their people. You and Sagani never found Persok together. The Adra figurine had gone dark by the time they emerged from Sun and Shadow, and it was another month before Sagani finally accepted that Persok's trail had gone cold again. Her search took her beyond the Deerwood and as far as the Living Lands. She saw the great coastal cities of Rawatai and the ruins of Old Valia, absorbing the details of these strange and distant lands. Twenty years passed before the Adra figurine finally glowed again. When it did, she followed its signal to a quiet hamlet on the outskirts of Adir. There, she met a young farmer and told her of her past as an elder of Masuk. Sagani returned to a village that had forgotten her face, but remembered her story. Masuk greeted her with cautious warmth, and Sagani found that their ways had become strange to her. She also learned that Kalu had perished of winter fever a few years before, and her middle child, Najuo, had died in a raid. But she found her daughter Yakona a hunter and mother of three, and her son Malak a builder of mighty walls. In them, she came to find her place in the village, and the familiar contours of a world that had changed in her absence. For you, the death of Theos brought an end to your waking visions and a silence to the whispers of the past. In their absence, you were able to sleep. The questions of a distant lifetime ceased to trouble your soul. All that remained was what to make of the answer. But at the moment, there was little to be done, and the matter would have to wait. A long journey loomed ahead.